Hello folks, welcome back to another lesson with Rivera Fine Art Studios. Today I'd like to take you through steps that I've used to create this drawing with charcoal. So this is about a three and a half hour long study, so it's a fairly involved study. And to create this, I used some of the concepts that I spoke of in my previous lesson. Now I wanted to try um, doing a head that was lit from the front and slightly above. So uh, front lighting can be very, very tricky because the light really fills up the middle of the face and most of the shadows fall along the edges. Uh, so I wanted to do that because it was a, a little bit more challenging than say a three quarter lighting or um, side lighting. So to create the head, I first was really thinking about the volumes, the, the volumetric forms of this sphere, which makes up the upper portion of the cranium, and then this tapering, um, I guess you could call this a tapering uh, oval shape to create the lower half of the face. So I took that concept and I um, combined it with some different measuring techniques to apply those volumetric shapes to the proportions of uh, Rebecca's face. Now, if you'd like a little bit more information on that, I would recommend watching my previous video where I drew a portrait from imagination and shaded it from imagination. Um, so the rest of this video, well, a good portion, I should say, will be uh, me drawing this portrait of Rebecca as a time-lapse video. So you'll see how I created it from start to finish. And then I will come back a little bit later and explain some of the things I was thinking of as I created this drawing. Uh, so without any further ado, here is me creating this portrait.
Okay, so basically, uh, as I said, I'd come back and explain some of the things I was thinking about as I was creating this drawing. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is the front lighting and how that affected this portrait. So if we just kind of look at the basic shapes, uh, once again, you have your, your spherical shape for the cranium, and then you have this tapering shape at the bottom, which creates the jawline. Now, everything can really be broken down into spheres, boxes, and cylinders. And that was some of the stuff that I had discussed in my previous video. Okay, so if we look at each of these shapes, uh, the sphere is, as we said, the cranium and also the eyeballs. The eyeballs are perfect spherical shapes. The uh, box would be the nose. The nose is the most box-like form that you'll find on the face. And then the cylinder is really uh, the area um, around the mouth. Uh, so when shading these forms, um, again, I had front lighting, so the lighting was coming in this way. Um, front lighting, as I had said before, is very tricky because all of the shadows really fall around the edges of the form, and then the middle is the area where the light is hitting. So uh, front lighting does have a tendency, or it can have a tendency to flatten out the appearance of form. Um, so everything that you get, your value range is very, very subtle. You get these subtle gradations um, from the darks around the edges into the middle where basically I have my highlights. So when I'm looking at those values, a lot of this area in here um, falls between the light and the mid-tone range, and then the darks are really just around the edges. Um, and because the lighting was also coming from above on a form such as the nose, so let's just quickly draw that out. I have this block-like form or this box-like form. Um, so I had a darker shadow at the bottom, and then the sides were really my uh, mid-tone, and then the front plane was my light. So if I was to really just simplify these values, I could say that the darks on the spherical shapes fall around the edges. The Mid-tone falls in this area, so between the dark and the middle, or between the edge and the middle, I get the mid-tone, and then the light is in the very middle. You know, so that's what I would have on the, the sphere. Uh, the nose is a little bit different because I have these very strong plane changes, so my light here is um, the front plane, the mid-tones, on the side planes, and because I have this down plane, this is really where my dark falls. Of course, I also have the dark of the cast shadow. Okay, so because this is a block-like form and it sticks out, I get these very, very strong cast shadows on the bottom. Um, when I come to the area of the mouth, kind of like with the sphere, so I have you know, we'll think of this as a, you know, more of a cylindrical shape. So it's, it's rounded through here. So what I noticed happening was that, um, you know, I mean, the cast shadow kind of hides this here, but if we look around the lips, the, the lighter part of the highlight is really happening more in the center. As I move back into the corners of the mouth, the form is starting to turn away from the light. So here's where I'm getting those lighter, um, you could say a light mid-tone value. Uh, same thing down here. The, the way that this form starts to turn away from the light, it starts to fall into darker shadows, especially when I get over to the edges of the jawline. Okay, so I'm gonna end it here for today. If you'd like more information on these topics, you can find online classes on my website, and I've provided links in the description below. Um, and until next time, take care.